Actually, I had this idea quite a while ago uh, for a club, and you know, there's all this healing technology out there, but uh, you know, you never know with people. Sometimes, are they safe or aren't they safe? And you know, these clubs people go to and everything, everybody's having a good time, and you know, a lot of people just don't know what the, what's going on with people, right? So, well, actually, this I don't know. I was thinking about not putting this out there because. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to be violating any problems with YouTube or anything. But somebody's going to get mad at me for presenting this someplace. But um, you know the Rife technology? Actually, that is actually known in some small circles. But they're like medical people. They're like, they might be doing it, you know, as experimental methods and things like that. They're not actually putting it out in there in the public. It does exist. What Royal Rife did is known by a few people, not too many people. Even that machine I talked about, George Slavolsky, the famous Russian engineer and scientist who was hit by a limousine in New York City, by the way, had a multi-wave frequency machine that can heal. He healed cancer left and right with that thing. There's three of those that exist in Italy. Um, and they've been restored. They work. Um, you know, the technology, actually, from the 1930s to now, it's like... You know, it's light years. It's in other words, if we wanted to have a, a machine like that, if that was like publicly licensed, I mean, they could be producing them made in China for like forty nine ninety nine or something like that, and everybody can own one. But for now, it's going to be very tough to get the idea out. But you know, I realized one thing. You know, one way to, that the human element bites on an idea is sex sells. It really is. You know, when they had Sony had their beta. Beta, if beta format with the uh, tapes at first when they came out, they would not put porn on it. They would not put porn on it. And I'm leading up to something, and that's what actually killed them. That it killed Sony because VHS allowed porn, and then all of a sudden, porn was actually there's a reality behind it. The VHS and the digital format, and actually even the internet was somewhat driven by porn, and you know the, the, all the uh, information technology was somewhat driven by porn. Now, my idea is with this club is to run the uh, Rife Technologies against every STD out there through rate carrier, radio carrier waves throughout the club. And, of course, you have to say that there's nothing being guaranteed by this or anything like that. But admission to that club would actually be at a much higher price, I think. It could be very exclusive. It could be very high dollar. And, you know, anybody who has these clubs that you know, gets a person on board that knows the Rife technology, um, that could be a major, major selling point. I mean, I know as if it is, they put these, uh, they put colloidal silver in the hot tubs, they run silver in the hot tubs, that's one of the technologies and stuff like that. But somebody could actually, theoretically, go to those clubs, have fun, and be healed. And um, STDs would be a thing in the past. It could actually go back to the Roman orgies and stuff like that, which would actually have some people to have conniptions about that. But, you know, if there was actually no STDs involved, I don't think there's, you know, then it would just be a matter of moral principles. But, um, you know, there wouldn't be any problem, like, as far as a public health nuisance or anything like that. But um, the actual technology is really here right now. World Rife's secrets aren't really a secret. They've been known by some people. But they're in, known by people in a, a niche, a niche group that will practice medicine in small areas. Now, the thing is, you don't know who knows it exactly. But, you know, as the, it, the information is starting to get out there more and more, though. It, it's not like a rocket scientist the way that we used to be. Uh, the information is actually getting out there. What carries the right type of signals? What type of signals can be driven? And uh, you can actually have a club that... When you go in the club, you know, anybody that works in a club, if they're always exposed to these elements, they're never going to have STDs in a million years. Uh, and everybody's healed. Now, would somebody pay more money to get into a club like that? I would think so. But there would have to be some type of legal release, no guarantees, and all this kind of garbage, you know. And it's up to the individual choice, whatever their actions are, and all this kind of garbage. But, uh, you know, that's another major selling point. And, you know, it's something that nobody's really thinking about. I, I, mean, I thought about this idea a while ago, and I said, man, that'd be a pretty wild club. But I'm putting it out here on a public forum, so, uh, you know, maybe somebody will think about this and uh, get it into action. Because, you know, really, 
great ideas sometimes they get <clears throat> pushed for the wrong reasons. You know, it's almost like people got into VHS and the digital format and everything. It was sex driven. It really was. It really was. And a lot of times these wild clubs, maybe that's what, you know, they'll become, uh, it'll go into other areas too. You know, you walk into a coffee shop and then you have healing frequencies in there too, you know. But it, it's almost like it would have to be a private thing. So in some of these clubs are private. So in other words, you know, you, you could be, you know, in other words, it's not open to the public. So, like, I mean, that's another thing. That's another problem with it. Actually, the technology could be used for good and bad. And that's the one thing I really don't like about the technology. Because one thing I've always said about these things, you could take stuff that's designed to heal and you can weaponize it. You can actually say, you know, the healing technologies of the world rife can be weaponized. And you would never know you're subjected to that stuff. You know, it's all a matter of how do you want to use the technology. And that's pretty much how anything is. But knowing how some people are, um, you know, it's... It's, it's a dangerous technology, too. But anyway, um, that's one idea I just figured I'd put out there because that's one way people, it gets the ball growing, actually. And we probably have the potential already to live hundreds and hundreds of years. I know in biology class or whatever the hell it is, so somebody will have, like they said, the limit on the human body is like 100-something years because of cell division. Every time a cell divides, it loses uh, so many coding on the end of the DNA and that's why the next replication of the cell is not as good and that's called the aging process but a lot of times with these healing frequencies it repairs that DNA almost perfectly so in other words the cell replication in the body can go on forever and ever and ever and you basically live forever in your own body or I don't know maybe some ridiculously long time as possible the technology is here right now it's been suppressed it's not BS at all uh, it's interesting that George's Lavorsky's machine has been out. It's been reproduced. Now, you know, if I had off that damn machine, you know, if I knew what was in that side that box and what was making it would work, I would actually um, get it out to public sale. That's what I would be doing. I don't know what the big secrets are. You know, it's like somebody thinks when they hold the secret all into themselves, they're not they're, they're going to make more money on it like that. And that was actually the defect of Royal Rife, because Royal Rife, when he made his machine, the guy that was, I forgot the guy's name, but he was the head of the American Medical Association, he wanted to buy the patent. You know, it wasn't like the American Medical Association realized the damn thing worked. Royal Rife said no. And that's why the, the AMA set out to destroy Royal Rife. But, you know, it... Now, what Dr. Bob Beck put out with that little zapper thing, that's not patented, but it's not as anywhere near as effective as World Rife's stuff in a true sense. Now, later on, I'm going to put out a video about take, um, a cheap way to do a portable square wave frequency generator. You can actually like just wear you know, on your body real as contact points and actually um, use a, I'll show you the parts that you can use to boost it up. It's very cheap. Um, I found out, you know, a lot of things out there that they advertise as Rife machines aren't Rife machines, they're just square wave generators. Um, the other thing is, um, there's a lot of markup on the parts, and I'm going to say how they could be very cheap. But again, I thought, you know, this is, would be a pretty cool idea, that if you had these private clubs where people go to, and, you know, they all have fun and everything like that, and they get into wild parties, and it's, like, close to the public, um... They actually run the world right frequencies through there for every STD out there in the book. You could probably charge a hell of a lot more money for that club. You probably could. So I just want to throw that as an idea out there as thinking outside the box. Because once that idea takes off, you see, in other words, if it's a private club and everybody signs it, yeah, I'm aware that we're going to be subjected to this, this, and that. You know, and it's I agree to this and it's an experiment or whatever. And you just sign some kind of release. It's cool, and you could probably charge a lot more money with no guarantees. But, you know, make sure that, you know, you're doing it the actual correct way. Because, actually, if the device performs as it did, as designed, and nobody comes up with anything, um, then I guess it works, right? So then you have a good reputation. So uh, as far as, um, you know, another idea that can actually push the product, it always seems to be, um, what, what sells is sex. 
And a lot of times these crazy clubs that get private and there's all these different things that go on. Uh, if they were running radio frequencies through there that killed every STD in the book, and, you know, that would be a major selling point. And once one gets a hell of it and the other, you know, it's it's going to spread, then it'll start spreading to other areas too, which will mean that people start getting on board with the healing frequencies technology. It sometimes it's going to take something like sex to get it going. That's really what it is, and that's that's just the way humans are, right? That's that's really what even when they go to here and there, and I think that's what they think about a lot of times. Sex, that's what check tracks their attention right away, and it may be the major impetus to get this rife technology which has been around since the 90, 1930s. World Rife had it, and also the Russian scientist and engineer Georges Lavosky had it. They've been healing people. We could have been healing people for, you know, 80 years now. 80 years now. And you know what? It's not been done. So we got to think outside the box and actually, uh, you know, probably Bill Clinton would approve of this. You know, he would approve of a club like that. He'd go in that club. He'd, have, he'd never have to worry about nothing. He would get younger. I think Bill Clinton would approve of that. So that's one reason I, I kind of miss Bill, Print, Bill Clinton as president, even though I didn't like him too much back then. When he, while he was president, now at Deja Vu, I think back, it, you know, he'd be pretty cool president today because he'd probably approve of this device and the FDA would approve it too.